that we operate under is not law. Okay? If you are a U.S. citizen, you're operating under public policy. Now, a lot of us think that public policy is the same thing as public law. We haven't had any laws at all since 1933. So what we have is we have a policy that you're operating under by consent. So with every policy that they, they try to pass, or they do pass, they call it an act. Now, if you've ever been to a play at school for your children, they're in a play and it's an act, okay? And so you can tell that they're acting because they, they have on costumes. And so when they passed the Department of Motor Vehicles Act, they made sure that you knew that you were participating in an act and it wasn't real, okay? That's why they dressed up all the actors. We have costumes on the Highway Patrol. We have costumes on the Sheriff Department. We have costumes on the judge when you get there. You're participating in a suit when you get to court. Suit comes from the word suit. This guy is in a suit right now, and so the attorneys wear suits. That's their, that's their costume. And you show up, and you're supposed to dress just like a citizen. And most of you tonight are dressed like citizens. That's how we dress when we're citizens. So what I'm, I'm saying all that for, if, if that makes sense, is that <clears throat> if those were all laws, um, there would only be 10 of them there. Do you remember the guy, the Joker, in that movie? Mm -hmm. And the guy says, how many guys, how many of your friends did I hurt? And he goes, five. And he goes, so there's only 10 laws, okay? The rest of them are called statutes or codes, and they all fall under acts. Now, here's the good news. <clears throat> I said all that to say this. In every act, in every statute, in every code, there's a remedy. And the remedy is not there for citizens. It's only there for the real man. Okay? Now, when I say the real man, that, that's who you think you are. Okay? The flesh and blood. There's always remedy. There's remedy everywhere. I can't believe how many times I've heard in the last couple of weeks uh, someone call me and say, um, I'm going to court for a dog barking ticket. And I'm going to do this. What do you think? Sounds good. Try it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, all these acts, you're, you're participating in them by consent. And one of the things that I'd like to talk about maybe the next time we come is the Pledge of Allegiance. The other consent that we have is when you gave up title to your car. You turned it into a vehicle and you entered it into the play. And so now you're no longer a traveler, you are a driver or you're an operator. And travelers don't get tickets. They can't. There's no law against traveling, even at the speed of sound. There's no law, I guarantee you. There's also no law for a traveler to carry a license. There's only licenses for operators and drivers. So if you understand all that stuff so far, I'm going to show you how this all started because it's kind of like uh, building a house. When you come up to a really nice house that's already built, you just get to notice how <coughs> big it is. The, you can't break in. It's got an alarm system. You've got all these things going on with this house. The water, you don't see where the water line comes in. You don't see where the sewer goes out. It's all hid. And so that's where we come in. We come in, we're born into this, uh, I want to call this onto this land. And pretty soon they've got us believing that we have to participate in the play. And so we see our government already structured this huge thing. And we don't see all the sewer going in and the water coming out. <laughs> I said that right. <laughs> we don't see the money going into the pipes. And we don't see the money going out of the pipes. 
Okay, we don't get to see any of that. But if you go back and see pictures of how the house was being built, you can see the backhoe out there on a piece of dirt grading off the weeds. And if you're a contractor, I like talking in those kind of terms because I, I, I build. I, I, run, I run equipment, I put in pipes, I've dropped in sewer lines, leach lines, I've, I've done all that stuff. And so as you get going, you forget. You're, you're standing there and you go, wow, oh, I'm standing on the septic tank right about here. Houses that I built, you go back later and you go, do you remember uh, all the water lines had to go around that big rock that we found while we were trying to... So what I'm saying is we're going to go back in time with history on some of this documentation from the District of Columbia and to see how it's, how it's all transpired, okay? Now, <clears throat> can you zip it up a little bit higher? Okay, the initial review of the District of Columbia. Now, this is called an organic act. Now, I don't know, uh, organic is the same thing as charter. Uh, and, and they hide words behind other words that have the same meaning so that you'll think organic means fresh. Okay? <laughs> Natural. 1871. It seems like it only sets up a local government like a Chicago or a Seattle. How do you get that, that they formed a private corporation? Okay, raise it up a little bit. If you take the act out of this historical context, from the present looking at the past, imagine who the parties involved are. We might agree, however, we cannot do that. To best understand what really happened, we have to follow a couple of principles. And the first one is, is you have to know who you are before you can understand anything else around you, okay? If you think um, that you're a, a wolf cub out in the forest, okay, and you're freezing to death, and you find out later that you're a man and you can make fire, everything around you changes. So we've got to understand who you are first to understand this stuff. Okay, God created you to be the king on your land. The word is called sovereign. That means so over reigns. You're driving the horse. You've got a hold of the reins. That's what so over reigns sovereign means, okay? So <clears throat> we'll raise it up a little bit more. <clears throat> Um, always know that yourself first. Discover the true nature of all the other parties second. Okay, all that you can pass up because it gets a little too deep right there. So right there where it says thus. Uh, to understand the parties involved in the District of uh, Columbia Organic Act of 1871. Think about that. That was only 140 years ago. Okay, two generations. That's it. So we're not that far back. Although they didn't have planes and cars and all that stuff there. Most of the people in, in, in that time era were biblical, okay, they had a Bible and they had a law book, okay, they knew the law, and those are the two books that they had on their hearth of their fireplace. And instead of going home and watching TV, or going down to the gym, or whatever they did, whatever we do now, bridge club, um, NASCAR. I, NASCAR races, I mean, you got to understand that the de facto has put everything in front of us to keep us distracted. I mean, every sport you can think of is on TV. We're, when, I was a, when I was a kid, we had, I think, 13 channels, maybe 12, because Channel 1 wasn't a channel. But we only had uh, 12 channels, and if there wasn't something on TV that we liked, that thing was off most of the time. We were out playing. I mean, I didn't have video games. And our children don't have the same thing that's going on and if you look at the underlying of what all's going on with that they're using all of that to keep us beat down to keep us tired and keep us working and so that we don't go on the internet and read the District of Columbia Act from 1871 so anyway um, we're I'm gonna go down about the third sentence we're not going to get into this act entirely suffice to say looking over the situations we find that the act is one made by the original jurisdiction Congress so this was made by the original Congress, okay, the good Congress. Right out of the Civil War, it started being a little more, uh, the, the Congress was a little corrupt because the South walked out, and so they appointed people at gunpoint to come in and pass this stuff. But nevertheless, uh, they were still operating as a de jure type of government, okay? Okay. Or actually, comment. There's also inside that document. You're not going to read it, but 
there's a limitation as to the amount of land that the federal government can set aside for purposes such as the district of Columbia. We're, we're going to get into oh. that. Yeah. <laughs> really good. Sorry. That's okay. Now, there's a guy that studied history. Let's give him an applause. Yeah. I'm serious. Okay, the District of Columbia was originally provided for in the Constitution for the United States. That's the original one from 1787 at Article 1, Section 8, specifically in the last two clauses, on July 16th and 1790. So, a good thing that was put aside by our congressmen or by our forefathers was corrupted by some, some people that had uh, other agenda in them, okay, in their pocket. Um, <clears throat> the territory included the actual government. Under the act, Congress also made the president the civic leader of the local government in all matters in that territory. So the president was a civil leader, a civic leader. You see how that, he, he wasn't even the president. Now, if I were to change the name of the District of Columbia to the District of Mexico, and we allowed Mexico to build a 10 square mile uh, capital area in the middle of Oklahoma, okay? And we said you guys could stay there and you could pass all the laws that you want. I've got to say Oklahoma because that would, that would be right in the middle of the heart of our country, okay? Now right in the middle of the heart of our country back then, was Washington DC so but if we let Mexico set up a little spot there and we told them they could hire a little president and they could do their own little thing but they only had jurisdiction over that 10 square miles what would we care would you care would anybody care I mean they had to stay to their self okay any laws that they passed was only for the citizens of that area and their employees okay go ahead isn't that what an embassy is isn't that like that is a foreign corporate uh, foreign jurisdiction in our country? Isn't that what Real it is? Real close. That's okay. kind of how this got started. Okay. okay. Uh, let's raise it up. Just a little higher. On uh, February 27, 1801, under the Second District of Columbia Act, two countries were formed and the respective officers and district judges were appointed. Further, the established town, raise it up some more, uh, governments of Alexandria, Georgetown, and Washington were recognized as constituted and placed under the laws of the district its judges, etc. So the United States Supreme Court has re repeatedly called this act the District of Columbia Organization Act. So they're an organization. Okay? Or the uh, Charter Act of the District of Columbia. Now, if you look up the word charter... Okay, okay I'm going to yell this out. Charter is a document issued by a sovereign or state outlining the conditions under which a business, city, or other corporate body is organized and defining its rights and privileges. Okay, so the District of Columbia got its privileges from the sovereign. Okay, that's you and me. We are the descendants of the sovereign. So we are sovereigns. Okay? Um, according to the United States Supreme Court, uh, the Charter Acts, first acts, were the official incorporation of the formal government of the District of Columbia. Now, I want you to notice that. That um, the official incorporation of a formal government, not the United States of America. It doesn't say America. It says the government of the District of Columbia as chartered by Congress in accord with the Constitution's privileges or provisions. So what they did is they took something good and they sub, subbed it out. We don't want to mess with this. We're going to let them do it. Okay. Are you guys following this so far? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Again, the Supreme Court called that the body of government a corporation with the right to sue and be sued. Now that's good news for you and me. They have the right to be sued. 